In this lesson, we'll learn how to build these dropdowns with only CSS. It opens if we tab on a link or hover over it. It closes if we click outside of the area. We'll learn how to animate from height zero to height auto. This works great for filter dropdowns, nav dropdowns, or anything else. So let's get started. So let's add a div and give it the class of dropdown wrap. And inside that, we'll add another div, give it the class of dropdown toggle. In the toggle, let's add a text block and also an image. And we'll select an image here. We'll give it the class of drop down arrow. Let's set a width on it. And let's select the text, change that to say shop. We'll select the toggle. And let's apply flex to put the text and arrow side by side with a gap and also some padding on this toggle. And inside the wrap, let's add in a div with the class of drop down content. And in that content, let's add a div with the class of drop down height. We want to animate this height from zero to auto, and to do that, we can use the grid trick. So we can apply grid, set one column, one row, we'll remove the gap here, and we'll configure this grid so that the columns have a min of zero pixels, so the children inside don't overflow out of this column, and we'll set the rows to a height of zero FR. Now, Webflow doesn't actually allow us to set the height that small, but what we can do if we head to custom properties is set a grid template rows. And if we set that to zero FR here, it will actually override the row height to be zero FR like we want. Now inside that height, let's add a list element for accessibility with the class of dropdown list. We'll remove the bullets, remove the left padding and margin. And this is a great style to apply to all your unordered lists since they're used so often. And inside of that, let's select the item, give it a class of dropdown item, and then we'll add a text link in that with the class of dropdown link. We'll set that to block, that way we can give it some padding on all sides. We'll change this link to say something like hats. And let's go ahead and delete these other two items so we can duplicate the first one and we'll change out the text. We'll say shirts and shoes. And let's select the list. Let's go ahead and give that a background color We'll also give it a text color and a border radius like so. And let's give it a minimum width of 10 rem like so. So we want to actually make sure that this height is zero. And to do that, it only works if the child of the grid, the list in this case, has an overflow of hidden. Once we apply that, notice the height actually collapses. And we also want to animate this height. So we're going to apply a transition to it. Since we can apply it to grid template rows, we'll apply it to all properties. Whatever duration we set here is how long it'll take the dropdown to open. So now let's go ahead and write our code. So we'll say we'll grab the entire dropdown wrap and we'll say whenever we're hovering over that wrap, which means that'll also count if we hover over the toggle or the content inside it. Then we're going to go ahead and find the dropdown height div that's inside of the wrap and we'll set it to a grid, uh, we'll say grid template rows like so, and we'll set that to one FR. So it just becomes auto height. And if we save that, whenever we hover, it just animates that height smoothly. Now let's say we have two of these and they're stacked maybe under each other. What we'll notice is it's actually pushing the one below down. And sometimes we may want that, it's increasing the height of the entire wrap in this case, but other times we might not. So if we want to remove that, we can set the content to position relative, and we can set the height div to position absolute to the top left of its parent, which is this zero pixel height div. And when we do that, it just starts to overlap the content under it. Let's set these back to side by side, and that puts them closer together too. We can increase this gap a little if we want. Now, one thing we might want to do is make sure that whenever we're focused, within this, uh, maybe on one of the links, we want to make sure we open this dropdown whenever we're focused on a child. So to do that, we can basically copy this whole selector here and we'll paste it above, add a comma, and we'll say dropdown wrap colon focus within. So that means if any of the children inside this dropdown wrap are focused, we'll find the height div that's inside of this wrap and set it to full height. And so if we go ahead and save this, you should notice as soon as I tab on, it opens. And when I tab off, it closes and opens the next one. And this also works if I'm tabbed on one of these links and then I hover over another one. So it works on both uh, focus and hover. 
And it'll also work if we were maybe tabbed on a link and then we click out of here, it'll close it. So that'll work great for mobile because the hover is triggered whenever we press. And if we click anywhere out, it'll just close it automatically. So let's also go ahead and make sure that we want to animate the arrow inside. Let's select the arrow. Let's apply a transition to transform and we can copy this class and we'll basically say drop down wrap like so. And we say whenever we are focused within that drop down wrap, we want to find the drop down arrow inside and we want to set that to a transform of rotate and we'll do negative 180 degrees. And let's also just copy this because we need to account for the hover as well. So we'll say whenever we hover over this parent, rotate the arrow too. And so now if we save this, it should work on hover or focus. It just rotates that arrow like so. And now let's say we were styling a mobile menu. What we would do is just change the direction. And then we would want to make sure that maybe this pushes down the child under it. So to do that, we'd select the height div again and switch it back to position relative. And then it just slides down like so. We want to select this list and go ahead and remove that minimum width like so. And let's go ahead and select the wrap and give that 100% width. So it just fills all of the space. And so now we should notice if we hover anywhere here, it's revealing the child like so. And that's how to create a drop down in Webflow.